Hey, what's going on, Los Angeles? Welcome to the Rams Skinny here on the LA Football Network, LAFBnetwork.com, your destination for all your LA football content, specifically your Rams content. Joining me as always to break down day one of free agency. I know it's just the tampering period, but it's day one of free agency. Uh, signings aren't official, but they've all you know been announced and come through, and the Rams have made a couple splashes which we're going to get into, but uh, my man on the other side of the screen, Mr. Skinny T, what is up, my man? How you doing? Uh, you know, this is my first year covering the the free, agent, free agency period full time for two yeah. days now I've been doing it. Oh, man, I'm beat. <laughs> it yeah. comes fast and furious when you got to pay attention to every every little thing. If you haven't checked it out yet, though, all you listeners out there, go check out the Rams free agency tracker, in my opinion. Uh, the best way to keep track of uh, all the moves that are, are relevant to the uh, to the Rams that's up and live and and definitely go check that out uh, lafb lafb.com for that but yeah what LAFB do you what do you think lafbnetwork.com <laughs> <laughs> I know our website of course I do I'm yeah. just tired <laughs> how you doing over there man good good yeah you've been crushing it today a lot of great stuff up um, but yeah that tracker uh has all the info you guys need so it's not just like a i've seen some or we've even done in the past just because i didn't have the bandwidth of like you know some tweets and stuff but you know ryan puts everything in there there's there's links to all of our full coverage at each position so you can see breakdowns of you know positional free agents that the rams could target that are still available um cap figures so it's all on there um so great work on that my man but definitely check that out. i'll put a i'll put a link below as well so everyone can find that if you're watching on youtube um, but if you're on LFBnetwork.com already, then you can just find it there. Um, but yeah, good, man. I, it's uh, Rams for, not first time, I should say, but, you know, first time in a little while having a good amount of cap to play with. Obviously, they broke news last week when they re-signed Kevin Dotson, which we talked about at length at our last episode. You can check that out, um, which I got to say, I think a lot of people, you know, and most people that comment on things usually you know, there's a lot more people that watch things than actually comment. And I'm not, I'm glad people are commenting, but I think a lot of people took what we said about the dots and signing as, as negative. And in reality, like we both liked the signing. We just thought it was a little, little rich and we want to see how it played out. You know, we're not fanboys. We're not going to sit here and just think everything the Rams touch is just gold, but overall that was a good move, but we're just gonna tell you like it is. It was a little, you know, maybe a little high price based on some other needs in terms of defense, but overall we both did like it. So I was a little surprised everyone, they commented at least thought we were uh, down on the signing and and too negative about it. Yeah, and I I didn't mean to come across negative. It, it, you know, it's it, it's not about the argument you make. It's about the the framing of the argument. And I did come out a little hot, uh, a little bit negative. And I think, uh, you know, from the the Twitter response anyway, I think the fans were in gen generally very excited about it, and and for good yeah. reason. He really did unlock the un unlock the offense. Uh, Like the player a lot, um, but. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get more into the cap cap situation after two more signings for the offense, not yeah. the defense. But um, good, good, good piece of advice was uh, dropped in the in the comments, uh, which was uh, why don't you keep an open mind, Ryan? And uh, I'm uh, I'm all about that. I'm all about being open minded. <laughs> I feel like you always do have an open mind. So um, we love it. We love the fodder. And so the Rams today double down on that and get their other guard, which they pretty similar contract dots in three years, 48 million um, of the totality. Um, and then they get Josh or excuse me, Jonah Jackson from Detroit three years, 51 million. This seemingly looks like then Steve Avila will slide to center. Jonah Jackson does have some experience playing center as well. So they have some versatility between the two of them. Um, but my thought, and I think you would agree is that they'll move Avila to center. You thought they should have moved Avila or thought they were going to move Avila to center last year. And then you have your uh, guard set with Jackson and, um, uh, oh, geez, now it's been a long day for me as well. Thank you. Uh, Dotson as well. So before we get into any further, just before we even talk contract, just your thoughts on the player. How do you like this signing, bringing Jonah Jackson from Detroit to L.A. to anchor that that other side on the guard position? Uh, I think they, they must be seeing something that I haven't seen to pay him at the same place that they are putting Dotson at. Or a little bit more, even. Um, uh, I thought Dotson had a better year last year um, and a, a more clean bill, bill of health through the year last year. 
Um, Jonah missed uh, five games uh, plus an extra in the playoffs with a variety of injuries. He missed some uh, due to an ankle injury, uh, wrist injury, and then uh, he had a partially torn meniscus, which he had surgery on before the that forty that crazy 49ers game where they ended up losing uh, to the 49ers. But, um, you know, again, steep. But what, you know, we, we talked about this pre-show, which is, what you and I have been asking for, and a lot of people have been wanting to see from this Rams team, is some physicality, and they've added that. So, mm. you know, there's an obvious direction that they're going. Um, they're maulers up front. That's what they want. They're going to open up a lot of space. They're going to uh, create a lot of space for Kyron Williams in the running game. They're going to protect uh, Matthew Stafford uh, in a great way. And um, all of those are good things. So, in a positive vein, I'm going to say, um, you know, at least we know where they're going with their offense. Do I still have questions about the defense? Do they still need to add a cornerback and an edge rusher and a safety and not on the defense, but a kicker? Um, all of those things uh, need to fit under the cap. And mm -hmm. and I, I think that they need to get all of those positions uh, sorted out. Um, now, you can you can go through the draft, and I, I do expect and I hope that they go defense uh, in the first and the second round. Uh, you know, all sorts of scenarios there, trading up, trading down. Um, but I think that uh, there, there, those are still question marks. And any, anytime you go into the draft to address a need, there's always a there's it, there's always a, a chance that those guys don't work out as pros. Now, how you how you solve for that is you go out and you get a guy like Jalen Ramsey, who has proven that he can be a, a excellent uh, professional uh, football player. Um, and that, that erases some of that doubt of what's going to happen. Now, any, anything can happen to any player there, um, any situ, you know, a guy can get hurt, doesn't live up, up to expectations, but you know, as we move through free agency, there's fewer and fewer guys that they can get for the defensive side of the ball, um, from a, from this group of uh, free agents that are, are more proven guys than anybody can get in the draft. You think about a guy like Jeff Akuda who just got picked up uh, by the Texans, former third overall pick in the draft a couple of years ago, yeah. just never, never worked out, never found a place uh, in Detroit and Atlanta. And now he's, uh, he's going to have his best chance, I would say with D'Amico Ryan's, but that's a different story. Um, so that, those are my thoughts. What, what do you think? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, let me say any, it, it's a, it's a fine signing. I, I'm not like displeased with it or whatever. I think, you know, Jonah, I think he has a lot, he's a mauler, you know, big, big body. Uh, what is he? Six, four, three, um, so. yeah, three, 11, six, four, three, 11. Obviously the pedigree coming from the big 10 from Ohio state, um, did some good things with Detroit. So, um, it's definitely, I'm not like upset about it, but anytime, and this is not just the Rams, this is the NFL. Anytime you make it to free agency, you're always going to have to overpay, whether it's an in-house guy or an out-of-house guy. If it makes it to free agency, you're going to overpay. And so, in my opinion, this is an overpay. Um, but that's the case for every guard, center, tackle, every player in free agency. Very rarely do you say, oh, wow, that team got a bargain. Almost always the player gets overpaid or at the, or they you know can meet those expectations. But we rarely see that. Like, what are the – I'm trying to think. We can even just think Rams specifically. Like, how many times – has a high profile, highly paid free agent exceeded expectations based on contract. I mean, you can obviously probably some quarterbacks in there. You think of Peyton Manning with the Broncos. That one probably worked out pretty well. Um, you know, I'm trying to think off the top of my head for some Rams ones, but very well, often. Go one, ahead. Of the wor one of the worst ones maybe of all time Rams history. I don't know. <laughs> maybe Allen Robinson. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that one definitely did not work out. He just got release from the Steelers as well. So it didn't work for them either. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not trying to be down just saying once you get to free agency, guys are going to get overpaid. You know, I'm happy for them. You know, worked your butt off. Great. Get, get, get the bag and whatever. Um, but you, for me, when you're just thinking of roster building and it's never going to be perfect, obviously Coleman Shelton's out, you know, trying to get his bag as well. But if it was me, like if you're looking at the offensive line, as it stands right now, how much better do I feel with Jonah Jackson, Steve Avila at center, and Coleman Shelton than I did with Steve Avila at guard, Coleman Shelton at center, and uh, or yeah, Coleman Shelton at center, and then I'm just saying too many names uh, <laughs> at the other guard. So I think it is better. 
how much of an improvement. When you look at, you know, again, PFF's not everything. Siva Vila graded out better at basically every statistic than Jonah Jackson did um, at the guard position. Will Siva Vila grade better at center? That we will see, but you assume the Rams believe Avila is going to be an upgrade at center than what Coleman Shelton was. So absolutely, if that if that works out and they knocked it out of the park, if you're getting a pretty similar trajectory, then you're spending a lot of money for two positions that did you really upgrade from last year. And again, Coleman Shelton opted out of his contract, wanted to chase. So who knows if it was it was the option there. Um, to even really get him back and what it is going would co- cost, which we're seeing centers fly off the board. So that market's shrinking now. So I, I yeah, I, I feel like I'm sounding probably negative and down. And I do like it. It's just, it's a lot of money for two guards that I don't know if I feel like it's a huge upgrade from where they were last year. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, you know, t- kind of two other thoughts on this one, just a note, uh, Steve Avila in college did play center, uh, for mm-hmm. TCU for two seasons, uh, as a starter. So that's, uh, something to know. And then also, uh, you know, this makes me wonder what they're thinking at running back. Are they going to draft one of the, one of the top running backs, uh, in the second or third round? Um, or are they gonna, are they gonna, uh, try free agency for that as well, or try trading, uh, for a running back or something like that, just because, um, you know, the those three guys in the middle are all primarily run run blockers and if you want to be an aggressive team you're going to have to make sure that you you've got a nice uh a stable of running backs to kind of rotate among so those are just kind of my last thoughts on on, on the deal and you know keeping an open mind and and you know plenty of off season left left to cover yeah and, and i think what it does say too is you know i i agree with you they're probably a little better in run but you know pretty good pass pro as well um you know jonah jackson graded out as a 59.7 overall in 23 uh 62.7 in pass blocking 58.2 in run blocking so it does tell me that mcveigh is saying okay i have a 36 37 year old quarterback we better make sure we have our offensive line solidified going in the next year so so they could have everything I just said, they could have said, Hey, we want to run it back with who we have. Like we want to run it back with Avila Shelton uh, and, and the same guys. But when Shelton decided to opt out, they say, okay, we got to pivot. And like I said, once you get to free agency, you're going to have to spend, you're not getting anyone on a bargain. You're going to have to pay a premium to get any of those guys. that were just starting quality. Let's not even say pro bowl, all pro just a starter at the position is going to get paid a premium because that's what the market dictates. And we see it every year. I mean, and everyone talks about, Oh, they're getting a bargain in this. It's like, well, no, the markets that it doesn't really matter. Sadly, if they were good or bad. I mean, look at Mike McGlinchey last year. We, we know him as the Rams playing the Niners. Mike McGlinchey was one of their weakest offensive linemen. He got paid by the Denver Broncos last year because guess what? Guys, teams need to tackle. So they're going to go pay one that's available, whether he was good or not. Not saying he was terrible, but he wasn't a top five tackle, but he got paid like one. And so once you hit the market, that's what it's going to be. So maybe they did think, hey, let's run it back. And then when Shelton opted out, they said, all right, here we go. We got to go and, and got to go and get someone. Let's make it a guy that at least started, played meaningful minutes, played playoff games. Yeah, there's some injury concern, but he fits what we want to do. Um, and you know, obviously he, he protected Jared Goff. We know maybe there's some conversations there. I don't know, but if we need a guy that's going to come in here and make sure Matthew Stafford stayed upright, because not only is he the most important player on this team for us to have success, if Stafford's gone, this team isn't doing anything. He's also, you know, a little longer in the tooth and maybe a little less, uh, mobile than he used to be. And maybe I'm not saying less tough mentally, but physically probably just a little more brittle now. And so you got to do a little more to, I mean, he's still last year, the offense line played better, but Stafford still took some shots. And so if they can sure up that interior to do that, then obviously that's the goal. So at least they're absolutely saying, regardless of who the player is, we're putting our money where our mouth is, that this is an important facet of what this offense is going to be moving forward. You ever heard that thing where they say you, you can tell by uh, like someone's bank account, uh, what they, what they value in their life. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. You ever hear that? You know, so you look at you look at how the the Rams have spent their money. They're the eighth most expensive offensive line uh, before this edition. So wow, uh, you know, and that's with a that's with rookie Steve Avila on there, and a and a and a former U, UDFA. They haven't. I don't think they've updated his contract to represent the tender. So that's yeah. it's going to go up even even a bit more. Top so, five. Yeah, probably. 
somewhere in that somewhere in that range, I would imagine. So you know, we're learning what the the twenty twenty four Rams values are, and that's that's it's good to know. It's level setting. We know we know what's uh, we know what to expect now. Yeah, and and they've shifted a little bit when we talk about throughout the the season, right? Where they used to be kind of a more finesse team, zone run. You do that with with smaller offensive linemen that are a little quicker and a little more mobile, and they've they've totally shifted. Obviously, they did move to a run gap scheme last season, and they've shifted now in in you know thought process with offensive line, and they're, they're going big body movers of people, and so that's what Jonah Jackson adds. Avila obviously is one of the biggest ones and, uh, and Coleman shell or, uh, I keep Kevin Dotson. <laughs> Kevin Dotson. Thank you. Gee, I don't know why I have that stuck in my head, but and Kevin Dotson obviously filled that bowl, fit that mold and did it very, very well. And, um, and obviously you still have Haven sign and, and Alaric Jackson, like you mentioned. So we'll see what's next on the offense line. Obviously a restructure for no boom, we assume is coming, which we'll maybe talk about here in a, a little bit later of the show. Um, but overall, Let's put a bonus. Hopefully, anyone that's mad saying we're being too negative has stuck around. Overall, I think we we do like the signing. It's just, you know, you're going to have to pay a premium when you get to free agency, which they had to do. But I, I think it's a good signing overall because we know that they value the offensive line. They're going to value the run game and value protecting Stafford, which is all premium for this team to be successful in 24. Yeah. And, you know, now just we just have to trust that McVay is going to continue to run the ball. <laughs> Yeah, that's the other side of this, right? That's the other piece of this. Um, and I, I feel like, and you kind of alluded to, I feel like this tells me that thou running back is going to come in the draft, not in free agency. I and mean, we saw running backs were flying off the board today. Yeah, there's People, hardly any left to go for yeah, anyway. So Most years, running backs are stuck till the end, kind of, and they end up getting screwed without money. And this year, you know, Saquon went early, then Josh Jacobs. I mean, Aaron Jones is out there because the Packers decided to release Aaron Jones and Sign I'm Josh not mad Jacobs. at that idea. I've always, I was, I've always been a fan of his. I, I have too. Yeah, if he stays healthy, I mean, he's a he would be a very fun piece with Kyron Williams. So, but oh. based on money, I think that they're now at that position going to look towards the draft. But we'll talk about that a little more later. So let's get to the next signing first. I'll let you talk about him. Tight end help. Um, I'm a little surprised, but yeah, go ahead. You you go first, then we'll uh, I'll, I'll give my piece. Uh, yeah, uh, Colby Parkinson. Um, joins the team, LA, LA guy. Welcome, LA home. guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, back down here, he was up in uh, Seattle for a couple of years, uh, mm-hmm. playing uh, ball for them. And, uh, you know, he's he's again pointing towards what uh, I was just talking about in terms of what they value. He's a run blocker, um, and, it, and, it, and a good pass blocker as well, but he's a blocking tight end. He's not a you know, he's not uh, a Brock Bowers type, he's not, um, yeah. Uh, Laporta type or anything like that. He's a reliable pa- pass catcher, but he's never been used that way. Um, but uh, yeah, he's just going to, he's going for one, uh, Tyler Higby is probably going to miss time at the beginning of the season. Um, so they need, they need to add that. Um, Davis Allen proved to be a good, good pass catcher, good option uh, when Tyler Higby did miss time. Um, so that's promising, but he didn't, he wasn't as good of a, a blocker as, as Higby was. So uh, bringing in something to kind of balance that out. And, um, you know, he uh, Parkinson even lined up in the backfield, uh, which is kind of interesting as well. So some interesting versatility adding to uh, the Rams. Uh, be interesting to see if they use him like that. Um, kind of in that uh, fullback role that, uh, you know, the 11 and a half personnel that, you know, we saw Puka Nakua kind of, you know, blocking uh, in, as he as he went in motion uh, through the middle of the line. So, you know, I think that's you know I I, I find it an intriguing intriguing ad. It's a seven and a half million dollar um, uh, average yearly uh, salary that he's earning. So, kind of a high kind of a high salary again. So they're they're, they're paying paying good money uh, in free agency. Yeah, another another three year deal, three year, twenty two and a half uh, million for the life of it, as you mentioned, uh, average per year at seven and a half. And you know, I think this was about adding. I don't need to add what you said. You know, really good run blocker. And if they have any concerns or anything about the tackle positions, 
you know, you want a good blocking tight end that you can, you know, beef up on that side if you need, if they want to, you know, run to the left and put him with Jackson or run to the right with, with Havenstein, you know, having a, a good blocking tight end is basically having a sixth offensive lineman. So this gives you a, a cheaper option than going and getting a, an expensive tackle to replace one of those guys. And then you can, you know, in the draft, you know, take a flyer and a tackle at one point you can hopefully groom or, or we'll see what's up with Logan Bruss. If he's still grooming or they want to move him inside again or back to tackle or whatever they're doing with Logan Bruss. But I think having a, a really good blocking tight end just gives you that versatility and gives you, you know, so you don't have to, you know, you can draft based on want and best player available and not on need because you have someone that's versatile that gives you that added, added dimension to your offense and to your game, because he's not going to wow you, as you mentioned with his, with his pass catching ability, with his route running ability. Um, he's got a great head of hair. That's for sure. I'll give him that. That's, that's for great head of hair coming back to LA. Um, but yeah, you know, just gives that versatility in the run game and, and in pass pro. Um, and you know, this is becoming more of a mauler offense, which is, it's fun to see and more of a, a bring your lunch pill to work kind of day instead of the glitz and glam that we got used to seeing in the early McVeigh years. This is, this is a lunch pill to work kind of guy, not a, as you mentioned, this isn't a Travis, Kel- I mean, Travis Kelsey can block too, but this isn't a, a Travis Kelsey type tight end. That's going to go for 12 catches and 180 yards and a touchdown. Like not saying he can't ever do that, but it's going to be a, you know, he might finish the year with 22 catches total. Yeah. He's, things. he's had uh 25 catches the last two years. Um, <clears throat> but even if you think about how Higby has been used in the offense over the years, uh, they've never really used him in that role. He's kind of like a, pull in case of emergency safety valve, almost kind of guy over the middle. You can pick, you can picture it in your brain. He, he runs his route, turns around, catches the ball, gets a first down. Yeah. That's, you know, that's how I've always, I've always really thought of him. And so you look at um, Parkinson's stats. He's, he's had 57 catches uh, and over half of them in his career have gone for first downs. So you love to see that statistic. That's a quarterback's best friend right there on, on third down or, or second and short, or got that safety valve that you can rely on. So, so yeah, yeah overall, do you like the signing? Uh, you know, again, I'm just, you know, I, I like that he's Mahler. He's, he costs a lot of money. So we'll, we'll get more into money just so that it doesn't seem like we're out. We're out of it. My, my, I think my calculations, my estimations is this will put the Rams with about $11 million. Is that what I had said? Yeah. Yeah, eleven million dollars left, um, but there are restructures. Um, there's other ways to go about this. Um, so, yeah, it's they're not they're not out of money. Um, but yeah, I like it. I like a you know kind of a you know they're taking a different tack with this. You know, we saw just a couple of years ago they they drafted a tight end that turned into a wide wide receiver and super athletic and but never never worked out. And so this is just a different different way of thinking about it. And and I'm 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 on board for this way of thinking. You know, we've been asking, mm-hmm. we've been asking for a more physical team and, and this is the direction they're going in. So on a whole, I'm happy with it. Yeah, definitely a shift in mindset. I like said definitely a shift in mindset to what they've done in years past. Um, and yeah, I, I like the, I like the player. I like the addition. I like what he'll bring to this team. Um, we'll just see how creative they get, you know, with the money moving forward. Cause it wasn't a position that either of us or really anyone, anyone that claims they, you know, we're talking about a lot. I, I would call you know, liar. <laughs> Cause I don't think anyone was saying, yeah, the Rams need to get a tight end in whether it's free agency or the draft. I don't think tight end was a position that anyone. Yeah. I mean, Higby, like you said, is going to be out. Davis Allen is, is, you know, still a lot of unknown, but I think because of the way they use a tight end, everyone was like, yeah, I think they're kind of good. They'll probably add someone for really cheap or just, you know, a flyer in the late rounds. So, you know, getting a fairly expensive tight. I mean, you got to think about it. Uh, you know, I, I know this is a fairly big difference, but if I'm not mistaken, like Travis Kelsey, who, when he got his contract, I'm pretty sure he was making 12, 11 a year. Wow. Park, Parkinson's making almost eight, not much yeah. less than a, <laughs> than a George Kittle or a Travis Kelsey. So when you think about it like that, again, for agency, you're going to have to overpay. So I like the player, like what he brings, but now let's get to the money because restructures are going to happen. There's no way it's not. Um, so I want everyone to understand that. Like there's going to be, you know, I'm, I'm almost positive. No boom. We'll get restructured, which should add nearly 10 million back to the cap. I think Stafford could potentially be restructured, which could add 20 million based on over the cap. I, I, I never know how the numbers really work, but based on me pushing a couple buttons, that's what it told <laughs> me. 
Um, but as it stands right now, on, according to kind of your calculations and how we've kind of wiggled with what these two signings today, in addition to Dotson's add, they should be at, you know, about 11 million remaining, which if it's as it stands, they would need all that for their draft class, most likely, because remember, they have a first round pick this year, which can be a lot pricier. So as it stands right now, with no restructures, that's it for free agency. This is the team going into the draft. Your thoughts on that. But obviously, obviously, we know they'll do restructures. Yeah, I mean, they're still the they're still the team in the league that has the least amount of of resources allocated to the defense. I did. I, I've said this a couple of times. I dug into it a little bit more. The the sec, second lowest one is the are the uh, Texans. Um, I, I think they're spending somewhere around sixty. Uh, Rams are about fifty seven million. Uh, Thirty million of of the Rams goes toward uh, Aaron Donald alone. So you so you look at the Texans. Their top defensive player is getting thirteen million dollars a year. So they're spreading out their resources among uh, more. You know, basically their, their defense, their defensive players are just making more money. They also have double the amount of uh, cap space. I, I don't know if that's true after today, but the, at at the time I was looking, they have so. You know, they're just they're just not spending any money on the defense, and it's concerning. You look at, you know, who's left in free agency. Uh, you know, at edge rusher, you got Daniil Hunter, you got Chase Young, Jadavian Clowney, Josh Uche. Um, you know, those are kind of your top level guys that are going to give you around 10 sacks. And that's where I think you need to target. Um, there's not a lot of intriguing names left on, uh, on a quarterback uh, at cornerback. Um, so, you know, again, I go back to what I was saying about the draft. It's like, even if you could trade up to go get Tyrion Arnold, he might not work out. There's that, there is that, there is that chance. So, yeah. um, you know, running it back with without Raheem Morris, without Jimmy Lake, um, you know, it's it's uh, it, you know, the, the offense is going to have to score more than thirty points a game. You know, heading into the season last year, I was saying they have the offense has to score at least thirty points. Now I'm going to say they have to score thirty five points, thirty eight points a game. So. Yeah. Uh, you know they they're going to clear up some space and and hopefully hopefully they make the right choices. Yeah, yeah, and that I mean that's the biggest thing that you mentioned it. That's the biggest I guess you can say concern is yeah. Last year, I think they played the defense played above their weight, surprised a lot of people. Kept this they, the Rams certainly didn't lose a lot of games because of the defense. I had the defense played admirably, but aside from some of the players that won't be back again. You got to think too, like Raheem Morris was in his third year. Like that defensive staff had continuity. You, as you mentioned, Jimmy Lake, those guys are gone now. You have a first time defensive coordinator with some new coaches in there and losing some pretty key players. Like we'll see is Witherspoon going to be back. You could be losing both starting safeties if they don't re-sign John Johnson and Jordan Fuller. You know, they're, they're going to have to go get a safety um, at some point just to add more depth there, whether it's one of those guys or, or like I said, if, if they splurged and went and got Justin Simmons. So at some point they need to, again, I don't dislike the signings they've made, but yeah, it is a little, I don't know if head scratching is the right word or just more of a, maybe it's an excitement level too. Like, man, I can't wait to see less in his bag, get creative here. Um, because if they do those three structures, like I mentioned, and that's 30 million, then they're back up to 40 and you have 30 million base. Cause you basically got to save 10 to 12 for your draft class, 11 picks. One of those being a first round. So 10 to 12 million has to be reserved for the draft. So that would give them 30 million essentially to then you would hope use for two to three defensive players that you're going to have to push some down. You're going to have to give, you know, back ended contracts if you get two to three or you give all that, you know, 20 of it to one player and then maybe some, some real vet guys lower. But if with 30 million, that's plenty to play with. I mean, you can go get a Daniel Hunter, like you mentioned, you can go get a Justin Simmons if they wanted with that much money. So it's absolutely still the opportunity to do it. But at this point, end of day one of free agency, there's more questions than answers. And so now we just need to see what they actually do. And I'm excited to see what they do because now is where it gets like, okay, this is where the the legends are born in terms of GMs and the Tony Pastors of the world that really move the money around and and make the make the the sausage, if you will. Um, because yeah, now we got to see, okay, how do you how do you mold all this with the Rams have been so good at for so long because yeah, you can't go into the year with no starting safeties again. 
you're losing another starting corner and a kill with their spoon. Michael Hoyt not, might not be back. Michael Hoyt. <laughs> I know he's not a fan favorite, but hey, he played admirably. He was a starter. Yeah. You need another linebacker. Like so did you see the uh the Brian Burns contract? Uh, Brian Burns officially traded to yes, uh, the no more, no more burns to the Rams. Fans no more burns talk. I'm sorry, on. guys. We had <laughs> <laughs> we shot our shot. We we tried, I, I guarantee it. Two years. Yeah, we yeah. all tried. Um, but yeah, so he's getting he's getting five year, hundred and fifty million dollars. So that puts him at the second highest paid edge rusher in the league, uh, behind uh, Nick Bosa, I believe. Absolutely. And overpay. Yeah. Um. So I, I'm curious. Uh, you know, I, I've always thought of Daniil Hunter as kind of the twenty million dollar range, but with all the like, I think all of the guys that are worth any money are already off the board. I'm not paying Chase Young. I'm not paying Jadavian Clowney. Um. Josh Uche has some interest, interesting things about him, but I'm not, uh, I'm also not super in love with him. So, you know, he, this is, this is kind of their last guy is, you know, and, and I, I'm sure there's other people in on him as well that, you know, edge rusher is one of the, the most important positions on the field at any given time. So, um, you know, ooh. I, I, mean, I really want to see price. them. I know it goes. I, I don't I want, think it's 30, I, but it's over 20. Yeah. I mean, they need to get aggressive here. They need to, because at this point, whether fans agree or not, you're at an arms race with the Niners. It's kind of like that every year, right? Like not mm-hmm. only are they in your vision, but the Niners, you know, they're the, they've been the best team in the NFC for sure. Last year, obviously in the Super Bowl, um, but they've been very good the last, you know, two to three seasons and, you know, always have the Rams number in the regular season in the division. Like they're the team you're in an arms race with. And there's a lot of talk. Yeah. They, Eric Armstead's gone, you know, he opted out. So that's a big loss for them big win for the Rams that he's no longer a Niner, but there's a lot of talk that the Niners are really in on probably not both, but either Khalil Mack or Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa's brother from the chargers. So if they're able to add one of those edge guys, like you can't go into the season as the Rams with Byron young and a rookie. Like I'm still all in on drafting a rookie. I'm still all in like I think that'd be great, but you gotta, you gotta go make a splash now for a, a guy that's been there, done that. Because as much as I love Byron Young and the upside's there, and I'm not changing my stance on that. As much as I love Liatu Latu or or Chop or some of these other edge rushers in this draft, you're not going in the season and saying you're going to go toe to toe with the Niners with a rookie and a second year edge guy. Like you gotta have some meat and potatoes back there. And as great as the great Aaron Donald is, and as great as obviously Kobe. Uh, Turner season is and I think the ceiling is just so high for those two got to have someone on the edge so Daniel Hunter to me now the Vikings have basically said they're moving on they signed two edge guys today so you know they're they're I think they're not re-signing him and obviously Burns is now off the board and we've seen you know Van Ginkle who we both liked and you loved he went to Minnesota Daniel Hunter's 30 this is going to be his last probably big contract I think this is the time uh the Rams to really swing you have, as we just talked about five minutes ago, you're going to have to do some restructures to have that money. But if you can get that 30 million, 22 to Dan, Daniel Hunter, 25, to, like make it, I think they got to make it happen. Is that, is that too reactionary based on what your, your rival is doing? Or is that a move that, that they should do? I mean, I, I think, well, last year just proved that they need, they need more, they need more pass rush period. Um, as good as uh, Byron Young was, uh, he's not. He's not the only. He can't be the only answer there. Uh, so you need it. You need it. It's it, you can't. You can't leave your cornerbacks out there all day long, um, getting burnt late in games. You know, a couple of those games late last season almost went the wrong way uh, because offenses were able to claw their way back in into games when they got aggressive and 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 took deep shots. And those deep shots were were there because the pass rush wasn't getting home. Uh, period hands down so i mean everybody knows they need it everybody's been saying they need it and um you know they i i agree i think uh, aggressiveness is 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 needed there um you know uh, leonard floyd off the board going to the 49ers he's a 10 sack guy last year um you know so there's just not a lot of 10 sack names on this list that I, I want on the Rams. And, and certainly once you get down the list, that talent really, really starts to drop off. Like I like Dante Fowler four sacks last season would be a nice addition, but that's, that's four sacks and he's past his prime for sure. Love, love the guy, but he's past his prime, you know, Yannick and Gakwe, 
not typically a guy that the the, uh, the Rams would go after, but interesting, you know, interesting upside. He might be over the hill <laughs> even at his. I don't know, how long has he been in the year? Four or five years? Feels like so, forever. Feels like he's feel, been in the league a long time. He's one of those guys that wouldn't surprise me if he was like 28. Wouldn't be surprised me if he was 31. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know, anyway. right? But yeah, I, you know, give, given, you know, who's out there for cornerback, who's out there for edge rusher, you got that one big fish, you got that one big fish out there. And I think, I think you, they've got to, they've got to go all in on that 22 million. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, let me ask this. We can kind of wrap up with this. I mentioned the Niners being in, there's been, you know, talks, not just, I'm just saying that on the podcast, like we have an article up on it. There's been a lot of reporters that have talked about it and, you know, who wouldn't be in whether they make a deal or not, but the Niners are in on potentially either Khalil Mack or Joey Bosa. If the Daniel Hunter or yeah, market is too high, let's say him and his agent are asking for 30 million and the Rams are like, that would be all of our cap and it's just not worth it. I think he has a lot of years left, but he is 30 years old. We've talked a bunch. I've I've been on the other side where I think it's it's even less, where I don't think Joey Bosa or Khalil Mack are going to garner much of a, a, not a trade market, but a high-end draft picks. I mean, we just, you see guys all the time, right, get traded for for pennies. I mean, fans always think that their guy's going to get, you know, big returns. It just doesn't work like that in the NFL. It's usually, once it once it's known that you're in cap disparity, and you have to shed off someone to get rid of the cap, that trade stock just plummets because teams know that they can get it for cheap. And why are they going to overpay for it? Because they're going to have to overpay in money when it comes to signing guys. So I guess I'll phrase like this. Would you rather go after Daniel Hunter for 25 plus million a year? Let's say they, let's say they stick with a three-year deal they've done for all their signings thus far with their three signings. So a three-year deal for, let's say, 70 million. No, let's go more than that. Let's go 80. What is that? 26 million per year ish. I'm terrible at math. 26.5, something like that. So three years, 80 million. Or trade a fourth or a third and a seventh or either Joey Bosa or Cleo Mack. Which way are you going? Cleo Mack is in the last year of his deal. So you're either getting a one year, you can maybe extend. Bosa, I'll, I'll look while you're talking, but I believe Bosa still has two to three years left on his deal. Well, you got time on Bosa because I'm all in on Khalil Mack going to the going to the Rams uh, for a third and end of something, probably end of something. I would imagine is where he'll have to go. Um, you know, it's such a it's such a Rams deal. It's such a less need deal. You know, mm-hmm. guy on his, his expiring contract. Um, you know, had a had a fantastic year last year. He's been healthy. Um, you know. And, you know, you, you know, he can, you know, he can produce. And, uh, so I think, you know, I, I like I like Joey Bosa a lot. Um, but I, I'm, I'm higher on, on Khalil Mack. And, you know, I think that if, if there is an edge to give the Niners, uh, Joey Bosa and Nick Bosa, they're brothers, uh, which Bosa is your Bosa, you know, uh, <laughs> um, you know, he's going to give him an, if, if he has a choice to go anywhere, which I think, I think if anything, he's going to stay with the chargers, but if, if anywhere he's going to go, to, he's going to become a niner. Um, and you know, I, I'm not sure how much our listeners pay attention to the chargers. We end up talking a lot about the chargers. They are in cap hell. They've signed people today. Yeah. They've added on to their cap hell. Um, so they, they are desperate to, uh, get out from underneath of some, some of these large contracts. Yeah, they're gonna have to cut a few of those guys, so they're gonna take anything at this point. Yeah, yeah, and they've got capital. They've got you know a few hours. Yeah, <laughs> to, to get this all figured out. So, yeah, um, that's what's going on the, on that side of uh, uh, Los Angeles. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very real possibility. And I, what do you, where are you, Khalil Mack, uh, Joy Bosa? Yeah, I mean, and the other side of it is both guys. So, like I said, Max just contracts through twenty four. His cap hit with the Chargers is thirty eight million this year Bosa's through 25 and he has a um let's see here he has a 36 million cap hit this year 32 million cap hit next year so obviously with trades things kind of get moved around there's some different stuff that happens but either way most likely if a trade were to happen with the Rams they would have to probably immediately extend those guys to move some of that cap to later because as we just mentioned 
even when they restructure, they're only going to really have 30 million of cap to play with. They can't just make 38 million work with one year remaining for Cleo Mack. So some stuff will happen. It, it can happen. I'm not saying it can't. So definitely that's the only wrinkle with the trade scenario there. Um, I would still lean to Daniel Hunter um, just because you don't have to deal with giving up any draft picks. You just, you know, pay the money. Um, but obviously Cleo Mack had a very good year. Joey Bosa, the upside is just so high. The guy just can't stay healthy. So, I mean, yeah. you have to see, you know, with this Rams training staff, you know, with, with their strength and conditioning coaches, how different that looks if he's on the other side of LA versus what has transpired with the chargers. Um, and you know, but the upside's certainly there, but for me, I'd probably still lean Hunter just cause you're not giving up any capital. But if that number keeps driving up, 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 then maybe it's worth going to the Chargers. and be like, Hey, how desperate are you? We'll give you a sixth for Cleo Mack. We'll give you a, a six and a seven for Joey Bosa. Cause I mean, fans, I want to admit it, but that's much more likely than a second. Like some of them think it's just not happening. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, it, it gives the Rams some leverage as, as they get closer uh, to the, to the uh, new league year kicking off on Wednesday. Um, and that, you know, but it also means that, you know, if they get close, D- Neil Hunter is going to come off the board sooner than later. So that's uh you know, the chargers might say to them, we know, you, we know you need this, <laughs> make us a better offer and we'll make the, we'll, we'll, we'll send them, send them your way. Yeah. What did, what did Burns end up going for a third and a, a fifth? Yeah. Which is hilarious that the Rams offer them two first and they turn it down and now they get a third and a fifth. But, but I say that because they got a third and a fifth and Burns is 25 years old. You know, Cleo Mack is 33 and Joey Bosa is 28 coming off of multiple injuries. So as desperate Maybe. as the Rams, I think are for an edge player. I agree with you. You know, the, the, the Chargers don't have a lot of leverage uh, in trading yeah. these guys because everyone knows, hey, you just signed three guys today and you're 21 million over the cap. Like, <laughs> you know, you're getting rid of these guys. So you might as well get something for it. <laughs> yeah. I would love to be in that on that phone call uh, oh, just, yeah. just to know how how exactly that goes down. Yeah. Well, you know, new GM, Hortiz over there from Baltimore, you know, we'll see if Les calls him up and like, I know you're getting rid of these guys. Do you want something for him or do you want to just just tell them sayonara and go sign with whoever you want. How do we want, how do you want this to go down? (laughs) Your choice. (laughs) Your choice. I mean, I've got, I've got a pair of sevens, pair of comp picks. If you want them. Yeah. Hey, what what a great, what a great deal uh, on, on the comp picks, five comp picks for the, for the Rams this year. They they love, I mean, they, a lot of the stuff they do and fans know this, obviously like they, they do with the comp pick in mind, like they will not make certain moves if it messes with their comp pick formula. I mean, that's all about their strategy. So, yeah. There, so there are 34 total comp picks given out. Five of them went to the Rams and then five went also went to uh, San Francisco. So yeah. ten, 10 of 10 of 34 goes to two teams. It's like more than 30% or just about 30%. About that, yeah. The NFC West rivals so hey like i said it's an arm race with the niners which makes it all the more fun because they're the bitter foe the bitter rival gotta do whatever you can to not just keep up but overtake which i think the rams are on pace to do but gotta you gotta have gotta have more than a second year and a rookie edge guy gotta have some some true bona fide star power there um which they really i mean floyd had some good years here but outside of half a season of von miller like they've really never had they've tried they tried it with Dante Fowler, drafting him super early, what, third or fourth overall. Um, they signed Floyd to the deal, which, you know, he, I think, overall worked out, had some success. Yeah. Brought in Von Miller, but, yeah, they won the Super Bowl with him, but it was only half a season. So this is their next option. They tried to go get Brian Burns on multiple occasions. So this is their chance to, you know, make a splash, whether it's in a trade or whether it's for, I think, Daniel Hunter. I would not be mad, and we're dragging on here, but I don't think I'd be mad with, like, a Josh Uche if they can get for cheap. I think that's a, a fine player they could add gives him, you know, a good player. It's, you know, it's not like a, a bona fide 15 sack guy, but he gives you some consistency there, but there's not a lot of names left where I'm like, okay, that's a game changer. Right. At this yeah. point, they're kind of like, there's one or two barring a trade and the rest are like, okay, that's a, that's a nice piece. Not a lot of game changers left. Yeah. We'll find out what they end up doing and we'll have a conversation after that. Certainly if, uh, you know, if, if they don't, if they're not able to snag somebody in the next couple of days, you know, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Anything else to add, my friend, skinny team? Uh, 
No, it's uh, it's been it's been great uh, talking with you guys and uh, interacting a little bit on uh, on the YouTube YouTube comments and keep them coming and I, even even uh, negative feedback. I, I'm sorry, our, our our Dodgers coverage is is lacking for some <laughs> of you apparently, <laughs> but uh, you know I think we do okay. I think we do okay with the Rams uh, and uh, appreciate each and every one of you that follow us and um, yeah, thanks so much, guys. Yeah, much appreciated. I was uh, if I can keep my name straight fumbling around names today but i think we got through it so thank you all so much for the hanging out the support make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you are in our rams lafb youtube page um or on the website lafbnetwork.com for all of our rams coverage we'll be back later in the week recapping uh hopefully some big some more big moves i mean if hey if they end up signing hunter or making a trade we might have to jump on here live uh whenever that happens Definitely. so we'll keep you guys posted on that but thanks as always for hanging out with us this is the rams skinny Brought to you by the LA Football Network. We'll talk to you guys all in a few days.